got rained out. I'm actually using my iPhone to record this, so I didn't want to stand on the rain of my iPhone. But I sat there for like 25 minutes trying to figure out which tree. I'm still undecided. It's so good, these travel routes. It's just all so good. I, I wish I had a real expert to come here and show me like, where should I put my tree stand based on the, the, um, the lay of the land and the travel routes and the bedding and the feeding. But all I can do is wing it, watch a few YouTube videos, hope for the best. I mean, I've gotten a lot better, but by no means am I a real expert. That's one of the things that are gonna make it cool. I just arrived at this property a couple days ago. I'm not a deer hunting expert. I spent 13 years in prison dreaming about hunting. Now I get to hunt with a bow or crossbow. And that's very exciting for me. Every fall, I just get geeked up and obsessed and I get to go hunt. So now I got this new property, which is really nice. It's a beautiful property, but you know, I'm, deer hunting is a rocket science. I mean, it's like rocket science. It's extremely, there's so many variables. And if you screw one of them up, that's it. They win. They'll outsmart you, especially the buck. They're freaking so intrinsically, instinctively smart that one mistake, put yourself in the wrong spot, you know, upwind, and so you won't see him again. He'll be two properties over. You'll never see him until next year, if you're lucky. And that's how smart they are. So you got to try to figure out how to outsmart them. And that's the plan for this year. Figure out how to outsmart them. When, when I have a chance, I'll make a video. I'll show you the, the trail to my, my food plot is you know, 200 yards from my house. Doesn't mean it's gonna be easy hunting though. I gotta sneak in there quietly, get in the tree without getting noticed. And then we leave the bed, the deer gonna be bedded back behind me, no more than probably 200 yards from where I'm climbing into the tree stand. One sound, clink, metal, anything. Like, what was that? Well, I'm gonna find out. Circle down wind, wind me, and be like, see ya. I ain't coming in that food plot. And likely the big bucks won't even come into the food plot. The does will, but they'll come around looking for doe. I'll be on the edge of the food plot. So if I want a buck, I think I'm better off hunting inside the woods. Maybe, I don't know, I'll look into it. That's all I know. For now, I'm out. Yeah. So, this is actually round two of uh, building, a, building a ladder. And the reason for that is, um, it's so dangerous getting in a tree stand for everybody who is a, you know, a tree stand hunter. You got the little screwing hook deals or the climbing ladder. I don't know, maybe it's just me because I'm getting older. I'm kind of a bigger guy. Every time I get in a tree stand, it's like, night, I mean, life and death. I, I got to get just right, hook up, grab this thing, reach around, pull myself around. And, and every time it's just like, I'm right there. I could be dead. And I'm only like 14 feet off the ground. So I think, you know what? Last year I used a ladder, just a regular ladder to get up my tree stand. It made life a lot better. But I don't have that ladder anymore. I left it in Missouri. So I decided stand up in a good spot and I'm gonna put a ladder there. but I realized I looked at how expensive ladders are was it's insane how expensive ladders are even on Craigslist they're like a hundred bucks for a ladder I'm thinking you know after that so my neighbor said you can just build one bing light bulb I said yeah build one so he comes over a couple days later has uh, two like three by four pieces of lumber 16 foot and I got a bunch of two by fours and so I made it it worked great the only problem was it was super there's a video you'll see this video of me trying to put it up into the tree, which is insane. Um, wait, I, I'm not joking, it weighed an honest like 135 pounds, I'd say. And I'm like trying to get it just right and balance it up there and I can't, I had to put my head on it, touch my head, it was just crazy. But I got it up there and now it's there to stay. So that ladder will be indefinitely in this on this piece of property. It's a really good ladder, super sturdy, it's nice wide. I get right up my tree stand and boop, step right into my, my tree stand, so it's beautiful. But I'm gonna have three tree stands, so. One's a climber, and I'm gonna. I have sticks for that one, so I can live with that sticks one. But the other one, um, it's a very small stand, not the most comfortable, but it's a really good spot. I already got a big eight point buck on camera right there. Second night, I put the camera out, boom, freaking big rack. So I decided I'm gonna try to buy either buy or build uh, a ladder. So we looked at them, couldn't find them. They're too expensive. So hell with it. I I bought the lumber, and I'm currently building, but problem is white pine is so bright and it stands out now you probably can't see over there but I'm hunting in that in that thicket of pines and they use that as a travel conduit to make their way out to this big alfalfa field across the road and uh, if I have a big white pine ladder 
standing out, just like going right up to me at a stand, bang, deer aren't stupid. Now, if anyone thinks that the deer won't notice that, you're out of your mind. The deer, as soon as they come walking in, they boom, look at that, looks out of place, what is it? Look closer, boom, what is that? Something there up on top of it. Uh, that's a human, I'm out. So that's how it's gonna go. But what I did, I, now a lot of people say, well, you just paint it. I thought about that, could have spray paint it, even rolled on some paint. The problem is, paint has a very strong smell and, and it doesn't go away for months or even years. So a deer, again, coming along, coming along, and all of a sudden, what is that? That's, that's not normal, it shouldn't be there, what is it? Start looking in the direction of what it is. I said, start looking, looking, where is it? Oh, wait, that's a weird anomaly sitting there, and I'm over there going, don't look at me, don't look at me, don't look at me. And before you know, a big buck, he's just like, I don't know, something ain't right. He wasn't here before, I've been coming here my whole life, that ain't right, and he's out. And then he'll probably never come back ever to that spot or if he does it'll be you know three o'clock in the morning and um he'll notice he'll, first thing he'll do is go look at the spot if he ever goes back to that spot every single time he'll look at that spot and see me see if i'm there and i've dealt with that with the first year that i um was playing tango with a couple years ago i was at eight point buck i come in and that deer came on i got him on camera every single time i wasn't there every time but if i go there he wasn't there so Obviously, and I was not smart enough to figure it out at the time. I mean, I just didn't know deer as well as I do now. And, um, you know, I was a rookie. I was in prison for 13 years. And I only shot a couple deer before that. And I didn't know nothing about, I thought I did, but I put myself in a good spot. But it just wasn't the deer. He was winning me. So what he was doing before he came into my bait, he'd circle downwind, no matter which way the wind was. And he'd see if I was there. If I wasn't there, he'd come in. And one day, I was sitting there about two hours. And... Finally, I was like, man, I got to piss. I got to take a piss. It's horrible. I got to take a I go to stand up, take a leak, take the leak, and then, and before I sit down, take one long lasting look. And then all of a sudden, I see him coming around. And the wind's blowing this way. I see him circling, but I think the ridge line comes up right there, and it's this perfect way. So I'm like, oh, this is it. He's coming right to my bait. So I'm getting excited. I'm getting ready, whatever. And then all of a sudden, he goes directly downwind about 35 yards, and he's, he goes under there. And sure enough, I don't know if he saw me stand up and piss or that he just knew to circle down wind. I have a feeling he saw me take a uh, stand up and piss while he was trying to circle down wind. The moral of the story is, so I decided to paint my my ladder with ash out of the hole, which makes it an ash hole. So I'm serious. Uh. So I take the ash and with a little bit of water, smash it up. Because again, the white pine, look, <clears throat> look at that. Now imagine that in the, in, in the woods, how bright that would be. I mean, so they would spot it, they would know, and the way to cover up the scent of the, of the paint or the stain, just use ash. Ash is normal. They've done controlled burns in here. There's fires all the time, you know, people burn. It's not something that's gonna alert them. It blends in with the, uh, the landscape. They'll never know I'm there. And so if you ever have to build a ladder out of pine or white pine, um, do that because um, you won't alert them. They won't see you and I mean, you'll look like a, a dirty ash hole. Yeah. <laughs> My wife's fighting back with that. Here, honey, you think that's no. funny? No. So anyway, this is um next installment of my um of the season, deer hunting for the season. I mean, kind of chronicle as I go leading up to the season, what I put into it, and the uh, kind of preparation. And then uh, I'm gonna have my GoPro running, hopefully when I whack a nice deer. So I have a friend of mine who's gonna give me a really nice target bow. Whack, yeah, whack, I whack him. <laughs> so um, get off me, whack off me. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, friends bring you a nice bow, so I may try to shoot a deer with a nice, really nice compound bow, because the one I have sucks. In fact, the one I have is, I don't even think it's safe to shoot it anymore. It's, it's so many days standing out in the rain, and when I'm out there hunting in the snow and the rain, uh, this thing's a little frayed and sketchy looking. I'm like, I don't know. So, but I do have a crossbow, so I'm going to uh, hunt with that crossbow, unless somebody gives me a nice bow, and I maybe get a bow on both. So I'm gonna get the GoPro going, and. Hopefully, you'll see, start to finish, there's a deer right there on my food plot right now. You can't see it. Why not? Because it's kind of meandered into the woods. So my, yeah, my food plot is, you can't see it from that angle. Just walked into that, that oh. little freaking swall. There might I be saw a nice buck there uh, the other day. There might be more. Could be. It was, it was a nice deer all by itself. Oh, it's another day, so I don't want to fall right there. But they, um... That's where my food plot is, right over there. And like this, this would be woodshed that's going on there. And the other side of it, about 100 yards, is um, where food plot went in. Throw and grow and alfalfa and winter wheat. So 
hopefully that brings them in. There's, there's a lot of deer around here. I took a ride on my four-wheeler the other day about this time of night. I went a quarter mile that way, just down the, down the road, and a quarter mile back this way. I counted 32 deer. 32. One buck. But of course, the big bucks aren't going to be walking around broad daylight out in the field grazing. But if there's 32 deer there, there's probably another 25 that you didn't see, and, you know, half of them are, are, are bucks, big bucks. So let's hope. Let's see. I'm going to make a good video for you. So. All right, and then you have to show the finished product once that's all done. Yeah, I will. I will. In fact, I'm going to get a video of me um, putting it up like the last one because it was such an ordeal. Um, I almost killed myself. So. Back on my knees, and uh, we got a little more ash to paint. Paint it. It's a paint ash. <laughs> okay. And we out.